Class 7, English Chapter 2, A Gift of Chapels, Part 2. Good morning, children. Today, we are going to continue with the second part of the chapter, A Gift of Chapels. Maridu crept up to the window. Lali was sitting a little distance away, awkwardly holding her violin and bowstring, her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration. In front of her, with most of his back to the window, was a bony figure of the music master. He had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old-fashioned tuft. So we can see the music master now. Look at the description of the music master. He was a bony figure. He had a bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old-fashioned tuft. Now let us continue with the description. A gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck the neck that folded like a ladder. And a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin. So what are the ornaments? Description of the ornaments is a gold chain, a diamond ring. Then look at his dressing. A large foot stuck out from beneath his gold-bordered vesty edge. Gold-bordered vesty edge. And he was beating the time on the blur with a scrawny big toe. So from the description of the music master, we know that he is not a poor man. He is a well-to-do man. He has a gold chain. He has diamond ring and his vesti has got gold borders. But do you remember his chapels? Do you remember his chapels? It was a very old chapel and he did not care to clean it. It was dusty. Now let's continue. He played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin. Stumbled behind him on her violin. That means Lali was not able to follow the practice of the violin as good, as beautiful as the music master did. So she was stumbling behind. She is making false steps. That means she is in the process of learning and is not able to play the violin nicely. She played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin, which looked quite helpless. See, this is Lali playing, helpless and unhappy in her hands. So, what is looking unhappy and helpless in the hands of Lali? The violin. The violin does not seem to be very happy with Lali. Why? Because she is not able to play nicely. What a difference! The music master's notes seem to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of melody. That means it was very melodious. When the music master played the violin, it was full of melody. It was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along, as Ravi has Ravi said. Mridu stared at the huge beringed hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem, making lovely music. So Mridu stared at a huge beringed hand. Beringed hand of what? Beringed hand of the music master. Scope. There was Lali derailing again. Now Lali has made a mistake again. Then a change comes in the scene. Amma came a wail from the gate. Amma, oh, Ravi, send that beggar away, cried his mother from the back veranda, where she was chatting with Tapi. 
He has been coming here every day for the past week, and it's time you found another house to beg from, Patti ex explained to Tapi. So, the beggar had been in their house for the entire week. He's been, he had been coming there for food, for arms every day. And so, Patti said that it's time he had found another home to beg from. Mridu and Mina followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden, making himself quite at home. He spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the arms to appear. Go away, said Ravi sternly. My party says it's time you found another house to beg from. So, the beggar does not care. The beggar does not listen to what the lady said. Instead, he was making preparations to uh, sit under the tree or lie down and take a little nap. Ravi says, my party says it's time you found another house to beg from. The beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one. The ladies of this house, he said at last, in a voice chocked with feeling, are very kind souls. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. I cannot believe that they would turn me away. He raised his voice, Amma, Amma, oh! Sad wail, sad his wail might be, but it certainly wasn't feeble. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in the withered valley and came booming out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with brittle chewing. Now here, there is a description of the beggar. This beggar is not listening to what the lady said. And he says that the ladies are very nice and it is these ladies in the house, the generous ladies of the house that has been keeping him alive for the past one week. And he could not believe that the ladies are asking him to go away and beg somewhere else. This is his trick. And he raised his voice again and called out, Amma, Amma, oh. Now when he called out, one thing could be noticed, that the beggar was not feeble. The voice was not feeble. Okay, and there were marks stained of, there were stains on his teeth. What kind of stain? Stains of eating, chewing, brittle, brittle nut. That means he can afford himself to eat pan also, brittle nut. He can chew brittle nut. He's not just a beggar begging for food, something to fill his stomach. He is, he's got a very strong, deep voice also. He is healthy. Ravi, tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen, called Rukumani, and he is not to come again. Tell him that. He sounded fed up. So, Ravi has to tell the beggar to go away because there was nothing else for him. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar, what his mother had been uh, said had been easy for uh, them all to hear. There under the name tree, the beggar sat up and sighed. So it need not be repeated. repeated. The lady said it loud enough for the beggar to hear. I'll go, I'll go, he said wearily. Only let me have a rest under this tree. The sun is so hot, the tar has melted on the road. So the beggar wanted to stay on for a while, sit under the sun for a while because it was very hot and he has no uh, shoes on his sole. And the tar on the road had started melting and it would be very difficult for him to walk on it. My feet are already blistered. My feet are already blistered. You know, blisters. If, uh, blisters are, uh, you know, there are bubbles on the skin from burns or constant rubbing. Blisters were coming out 
already. He stretched out his feet to show the large pink peeling blisters on the sole of his bare feet. I suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chapels, Mridu whispered to Mina Ravi. Have you got an old pair of Have you got an old pair in the house somewhere? So she is asking Ravi if there was any old pair of shoes, ch chapels that could be given to the beggar. Because they could see, the children could see that the feet of the beggar are full of blisters. I don't know, said Ravi. Mine are too small to fit his feet, or I'd have given them to him. And his feet were larger than Medusa and Minas. The beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and Tightening his dhoti, he raised his eyes and looked carefully at the road, gleaming in the afternoon heat. So the beggar was, uh, he was shaking his upper cloth, he tightened his dhoti and he was ready to leave. He needs something on his feet, Mina said, her big eyes filling. It's not fair. So the girl felt sorry for the beggar. And she says that he has to wear something. Shh, said Rabbi. I'm thinking about it. Blubbering. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair isn't going to help. In two minutes, he'll be frying his feet on that road. What he needs is a pair of chapels. So where do we get from? Come, let's search the house. He pushed Mridu and Mina into the house. So what are the children going to do? They are going to, the mother is sending the beggar away. But they are going to find something for the beggar to wear on his shoes because the feet of the beggar are full of blisters. And uh, we will see what the children do ne in the next chapter. So today we are going to wind up here. And uh, uh, children, I'll give you some assignments. I'll be sending the assignments uh, through WhatsApp, but uh, let me just tell you what you have to write in your assignment. Why did the beggar want to be under the tree? It's the first question. And the second question is, how did the children decide to help the beggar? You have to answer two questions only. Please do the homework. Maintain a notebook, single line notebook, and please write it very neatly. Some of you have done it very nicely, uh, continue doing it well. Thank you for today. Have a good day.